Number 27, a heating coil has a resistance of 7 ohms and operates on 120 volts. Find the current in the coil. We can simply use Ohm's law for that. Ohm's law, I equals V over R. 120 volts, divide by 7 ohms. You'd think I would start writing a little clearer here. 120 divided by 7. 17.1, 17.1 amps, a little better. How much energy is used in 10 minutes? Okay, energy is power times time. Uh, the first thing we need to do is find the power. Power is equal to V times I. The V is 120 volts. The current, 17.1 amps. We'll multiply those together. That will give us watts. 120 times 17.1 is 2052. 2052 watts. And we can write that as 2.052 kilowatts. That's important. When we look at energy power times time, the power must be written in the kilowatts. So 2.052 kilowatts times the time, 10 minutes. Now for 10 minutes, you gotta figure out how many hours is 10 minutes. So 10, 10 divided by 60 is 0 0.1, zero point one six seven hours and that gives us kilowatt hours times 2.052 we have 0 0.342 0 0.342 kilowatt hours of energy at eight cents that's inexpensive at eight cents per kilowatt hour what does it cost to operate the heating coil for four hours per day for 30 days we're going to take that number 0 0.3 0 0.342 kilowatt hours we're going to multiply that by 30 days and then we're going to multiply it by our conversion cost of eight cents per kilowatt hour and that will give us our cost times 30 times 0 0.08 comes out to be about 82 cents did we do that right uh, no we didn't quite do that right uh, that would be 10 minutes a day for 30 days. That would be 82 cents. Uh, this new problem says, what does it cost to operate the heating coil for four hours per day for 30 days? All right, so I'm just gonna draw a line through this. Uh, let's check that problem again. Energy is power times time. The power never changed. 2.052 kilowatts times four hours. For 30 days, four hours for 30 days, that's going to be 120 hours total. That's going to give us an energy of 2.052 times 120 equals 246.24 kilowatt hours. That's good. That is the energy times our factor of eight cents per kilowatt hour and that's going to give us our cost 246.24 times 0 0.08 is nineteen dollars and seventy cents so the takeaway in this kind of problem is that you can calculate how much it's going to cost you to use something if you know it's electrical power it's electrical power right here power is voltage times current you can use that for anything electrical in your home and with that if you know the power and you know the time multiply power times time to figure out the kilowatt hours 
then use the cost factor. Number 28. In this circuit, uh, we have a, a two resistors in series. There's two resistors in parallel, which are in series with this resistor. We would like to find the total resistance and total current. Let's start simplifying this. Those top two resistors, let's combine them as one. Two fifty volt battery, thirty and fifty. What's thirty plus fifty? Uh, the thirty plus fifty. You remember one over resistors in parallel. One over resistors in parallel is equal to one over the thirty plus one over the fifty. Thirty inverse plus fifty inverse equals inverse is eighteen point seven five. ohms. We already have the 60 ohm resistor and so right there then we can simplify that into one. Uh, they're in series. We simply add those up. That's 78.75 ohms of resistance. 250 volt battery. This allows us to figure out the entire current now. The entire current flowing through the, through the circuit. Ohm's law, total current is 250 volts divided by 78.75 ohms. And that gives us 250 divided by 78.75, amps of current. All right, first answers are done. We figured out the total resistance and the total current in the circuit. Now let's start working backwards. We're at that step. So we're from here. So let's jump up to that circuit. Okay, this, uh, so we condense everything down and then we start working backwards. Uh, in this circuit right there, we could measure the voltages across, like in the lab. If you want to measure the voltage across this right here, take the two probes, and measure across. If you want to measure the voltage here, take your probes and measure across. The sum of these voltages should be 250 volts because they're in series. Um, if you saw the Kirchhoff's videos, this is a rise in potential energy. As you go up, that's a rise and increase in potential energy. This is a voltage drop, and that's a voltage drop. Let's trace that in. Uh, green. We have from this spot. We have an increase in potential energy, and here we have a decrease and a decrease back to zero. A voltage does represent energy per unit charge. So when you kind of think about lifting an object upwards, uh, an increase in potential, and when something falls, it's a decrease. Let's find these voltages, these voltage drops. We're going to call this V1. We're going to call this one V2 right there. Ohm's law says that V1 is I times R, and that V2 is I times R. V1, V1, the voltage, um, the current, the current that's flowing here, this total current, we already know what that is. Uh, in series, they have the same current flow. We're gonna have 3.17 amps times a resistance of 18.75 ohms and for the voltage drop here it's the same current 3.17 amps times the resistance drop uh, the resistance 60 ohms and right away we'll know if we did these right because they better add up to be 250 3.17 times 18.75 is 59.4 59.4 volts. The other one, 3.17 times 60 is, 3.17 times 60 is 190.2, 190.2 volts. Okay, let's check those answers. Those are the voltage drops. Um, do they add up? 
uh, yeah, approximately. There's a little rounding error down here. But yeah, that ends up being about 250 volts. So those are correct. All right. Find the voltages across the resistors. I think we've done that because for this volt, voltage 2, V2, if we look right here, if we measure the, with the voltage across that resistor, okay, that's V2. We've got it, 190.2 volts. If we measure the voltage across from that spot to that spot, these would have the same voltages. This is voltage 1. They both have a voltage of 59.4 volts. All right, excellent. Last problem, the challenge problem. Is it a challenge? Not so much. We just want to con combine these resistors. And, and one of the last things we did before spring break, uh, Mrs. Cantu had different uh, challenge resistor problems for us to do. We were going through. Um, we have spot A and spot B. We want to combine everything to one resistor value. Uh, these are kind of fun. So there's uh, A. And let's see, what do we get here? Uh, we see the 10, the 40, and the 30. We can combine those as one resistor right away. So what's 10 plus 40 plus 30? Uh, let's put that over here. One resistor over R in parallel is 1 over 10 plus 1 over 40 plus 1 over 30. Um, you can have lots of resistors in parallel. This is 3, 10 inverse plus 40 inverse plus 30 inverse equals inverse, and that's 6.316. 6 6.316 ohms. Notice how the voltage decreased. When, volt, when the resistors are in parallel, there's more pathway, so the overall resistance drops. All right. And next, we have the 40 and the 35 and the 20. Okay, now this is a, an interesting series parallel combination. So we don't need to simplify everything at once. Uh, so we were at that spot there, up here, and we got down to this spot, this flat spot. Um, and so we have a 40 over here on this side. We'll just leave that alone. And on this side, we have the 35 and the 20. And so right there, we can combine those. And uh, when resistors are in series, and you just add them up, that's going to be 55 ohms. And then we're back to position B, location B. All right, so here's a series parallel. This looks very much like one of the previous problems, uh, kind of like number 28 right here, series parallel combination. The 40 and the 55, how do we add those? 1 over resistors in parallel is equal to 1 over 40 plus 1 over 55. Let's draw that. There's our A. There's that. And the 40 and 55, we're going to combine those as one. And here's our B. Uh, we know that was 6.316. And the 40 and the 55, now looking at that, 40 inverse plus 55 inverse equals inverse. And we get 23.16. 23.16. ohms and when resistors are in series it's very easy just to combine them one last time a to b and we simplify as one resistor we add them up we have 23.16 plus the 6.316 and that gives 29.476 about approximately 29 0.5 ohms of resistance. Excellent. Okay, thank you for the review. Uh, students, I hope you do great on your exam.